Okay, I am venturing into uh, the you know, difficult, dubious territory for myself here because I know that the experts in these fields that I, I talk about, which I've only little read little bits about, um, you know, I'm going to say you don't know enough about this field to comment. But, you know, give me a chance. I, I am indebted to Signor uh, Michio Kaku for having taught me uh, uh, a little bit, at least, about, uh, you know, quantum uh, mechanics and, and that uh, field of endeavor. Um, and through that, I came to understand something. Now, you might say that, oh, that's not what it meant, but through that, I came to understand something. So I'm just going to share with you what I've come to understand, okay? And that's this. Uh, I'm just going to use two little examples from, uh, from the field of uh, um, quantum mechanics. Uh, one of them is uh, referred to quite famously as uh, Schrodinger's cat. And Schrodinger's cat, from my understanding of it, please understand, I'm not an expert, okay, but I'm telling you what I know of it, look up the real thing, if you will, but listen to my conclusions about it, if you would. And that is, Schrodinger's cat is the idea of, um, you put a, a live cat into a well-shielded box, you know, uh, like bigger than a shoebox, but, you know, uh, well-shielded such that whatever happens inside, uh, you... Uh, you're not going to be aware of, okay, uh, necessarily, because you have soundproof and all that stuff. Now, you put the cat inside, and you put inside with it a sealed jar of poison, uh, that, you know, that will, will, will kill the cat um, automatically, with its odor perhaps. In any case, with that, you put in some means, like maybe a radioactive substance, uh, where it, it will cause that explosion to occur, you know, um, or can cause that explosion to occur. And that, um, you don't know what, you know when it's going to happen, that, that, that explosion is going to occur, that radioactive substance, because, you know, it, it works on these half-lives and things. Anyway, um, now you close the box and you, you go away. And you don't know if that, if that explosion has occurred yet or not. It could have happened immediately. It could have happened day to day. You don't know. In any case, the question you ask yourself is, is the cat dead or alive, right? At any given point, is the cat dead or alive? And, you know, by the mathematical mathematical equations, etc., associated with it, you find that the cat could, there's a probability at that point in time that it could be dead. There's a probability that it could be alive. And from what I understand, the weird possibility of it being both dead and alive. <laughs> okay. In any case, let's, let's drop the, the, thing, uh, the third one for the moment, or just keep it there anyway. The thing to me is this, it's a probability. Okay. Everything, what the quantum, to me, what quantum probability is, is simply that, okay? And everything in the world is a probability. You don't know. You can never know that it's this or that or the other, <laughs> you know? You can only speak the probability. Now, I'll give you an example. Uh, I try to extend it a little bit into the notion of a mother who is with uh, her child, okay? And... As far as the child is concerned, you know, the child knows that the mother's right here. But when the mother leaves for the kitchen, as far as the child is concerned, it really has no idea if, it, uh, if his or her mother is dead or alive. Right? You know, his mother could have died on the way, right? And, but so it's a probability that, uh, you know, my mother is alive, but probability that she's dead, okay? But we don't think that. What we do is we make reality. We soon learn that, oh yeah, mum always comes back, so must be a reality, you know. Oh, that guy's always drinking, must be a drunkard, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But, but the point is that, you know, that reality gets created very, very, that notion of reality gets created very, very early in our lives. And as a result of that, as we grow up, that it becomes like, oh yeah, things are very real everywhere, everything's real. We don't, we lose the idea of probabilities altogether. You know, that's our stupidity, unfortunately, you know. Um... So that, that's one thing in, in, in quantum physics that I found very, very applicable to life itself. If we could learn and understand that things are probabilities, we would have a far better time negotiating life because we wouldn't draw conclusions as quickly as we do, right? Okay, the next one is what has been labeled the double slit experiment, right? And see if I can explain it to you. And that is, you take two, say, white screens, okay? And uh, on the uh, first of the white screens, you, you know, cut out two slits, okay, two slits. And then you shine a light, let's say, okay, you shine a light through these two slits um, onto the, the, um, 
the screen behind. Now, from what I understand, what a weird thing happens. <laughs> you know, when you do this, and you go back, and you take a, a, a look at what's happened behind, you find not two bands of uh, light, but rather you find a sort of a, what might be a you know, wave pattern. You know, so uh, you probably heard that there are particles and waves, you know, and that's what physics is all about, particles and waves. But the quantum physicians, uh, or the mechanic, uh, mecha or whatever, quantum physicists, have not physicians for sure, <laughs> quantum <laughs> physicists have, um, what they've um, located here is, is something really seriously weird because, you know, why are we getting, oh, that waves, waves and particles, uh, could be, could, could waves and particles actually be interchangeable? Could they be waves at one point and particles at another point, you know? And I was reading this, thinking about it. Yeah, of course, of course, that's what it is. It, it seems so logical to me. So I might be drawing things beyond what the quantum physicists would, but, but allow me my little uh, extension here. And that is this: when, what I'm wrong, I understand. When you actually have an observation device behind that first screen to see where that light is going, then you end up actually seeing the two bands that you were expecting. You know. So what gives here, right? So here's the thing. Here's my interpret interpretation of it. It's this, that between those screens, <laughs> between those screens, the only difference is the observer. When there is an observer observing things between the screens, it goes to where you want it to. But when there's no observer, it can go into any place, okay? It's like, for example, I, I throw uh, a piece of um, paper into a uh, waste paper basket, for example, right? And I don't bother about whether that fell into the waste paper basket or not. It just, you know, it goes, right? <laughs> now, if I'm not paying attention, that is, I'm not observing between the screens, it can go anywhere. You know, it could go into any random position. Therefore, it becomes a whole, you know, wave pattern of possibilities for where that piece of paper went, right? Now, to me, this is sort of the, the basis of it all. We who are careful, who can be careful, who learn to be careful, we learn that it's always best. And this is the cleaning ladies of the world, for example, this is, which is why we have been you know, trying to give out tips to the, all the cleaning ladies, all these hotels that we've met. We haven't tipped anybody else, really, uh, except, of course, the restaurants, if we were ever open, and this whole COVID nonsense that went on. But the cleaning ladies, we've always try to tip in some way because they are the, the people who keep the, the world in order. They are between, behind the screens to see is everything in place, properly in place. And if we can learn how to do that, if we can learn how to keep everything properly in place, then nothing's going to go out of order for us, is it, in, the, in our worlds? Think about a blind person. I tried this at, at one of the hotel rooms I stayed and I decided to put shut off all the lights and close my eyes because I can't see through this right eye anyway. Okay. Um, so I closed my eyes uh, with, with these eye patches I had, and I slowly, you know, spent most of the night learning that I could move around my room just fine and know exactly where everything was. And I was dancing to the music and, you know, I knew exactly where not to go. And slowly I realized I could, even with my eyes closed, I could make out the contours of the beds in the room. And I thought, oh, that, that's cool, because that, and I also read about it first. It goes back to my own sort of theory, if you will, about collisions and how that created life in the first place, uh, and consciousness in the first place. And, and I, I realized that, ah, so that, in fact, pe the, the collisions occurred, but it was not between objects that could see each other. It could, they could only sense each other. And then they developed senses, like a sense of sight, and that sight also produced the other. Right? But when you don't have sight, what? how do you produce the other? Well, you, say, you know, blind people, I have heard of blind people driving cars. Now, how many of you know that? How many of you know uh, who are not blind know who are blind people? I don't think too many of us do. We, we like to look at a distance and say, oh, poor blind people. You know, <laughs> trust me, they're not poor blind people. The blind people know way better than you do about what is going on in the world. Okay? So, just to include that thing about the between the screens. If you are constantly on top, but by habit, because it becomes a habit, constantly on top of keeping things in order. You know, cleanliness is next to godliness, right? Keep things in order. 
you will learn to stay between the screens, your mind will become more competent, your memory will come better. What I've noticed in the world is the memory, people's memory sucks, it's terrible, and then they tell me, how did you remember that? <laughs> Just because your memory is bad doesn't mean mine is bad, right? Um, and people have said, oh, your damn memory is dangerous. I just remember things because I have trained myself to remember things. I remember people's faces with photographically. It's easy. Like the, the officer who said to me you know, when, when he was handcuffed or arresting me, uh, don't look at me, look, for, uh, look ahead. And I said, no, I'm going to memorize your face. Which is why, of course, he handcuffed me that viciously. <laughs> anyway, stay between the screens, folks, and all will be well. So that's my take on how something like quantum physics can help us change our worlds.